All right, hi everyone. Welcome to Moraine Valley Community College in, uh, with a continuation of our One Book, One College event, Giovanni's Room. My name is Anthony Desmond, and I'll be introducing our director, Dan Powell, who is also a faculty member, a great faculty member. And, uh, and just to give a little talk about like film club and a little bit of movie. Um, so yeah, I am a, we are co-sponsoring with the Filmmakers Club, and I'm the president of that club. We meet every Wednesday at 4.15, so we meet today at 4.15, and we focus on, like, vi we make very short films like the one we're about to see here. Um, so yeah, if you're interested in filmmaking at all, please come check out our meetings at 4.15 on every Wednesday in F229. So I'm just gonna give over to uh, the mic to the director, Dan Powell. An acclaimed faculty member and astounding person. Oh my God, so <laughs> cool. Astounding. Thank you, Anthony. Uh, well, welcome. So glad you guys uh, came today. Uh, this is uh, a lot, hopefully, will be a lot of fun for you. Um, Scotty Works Out is a short film, so uh, it's only 13 and a half minutes. So uh, you know, you're not going to be here for like five hours watching anything. Uh, this is this was a, a big lab labor of love um, that uh, it's a screenplay that I wrote a few years ago and uh, decided that this would this would really make a great uh, a great short it would be something great for uh, I think a lot of people to experience because you know I I, I teach I teach uh, film here I teach film appreciation and and uh, uh, film history. I also teach down at DePaul, and I, I'm with students all the time, and I always see students on their cell phones, and I always see students that are plugged in to something or other, and uh, this is really kind of a film about, uh, you know, a, a character that kind of lives that way, you know, this guy, as you'll see, goes to the gym, and he spends a lot of his time sort of hooked up to his, uh, to his phone, amongst other things, and um, but he's got certain ideas, he's got certain thoughts, and that's what's kind of explored in this. So uh, I'm, I'm not going to say much more than that. Uh, we'll let the film uh, play, and then afterwards, if you have any questions, uh, I'll be happy to answer them. And one of the uh, members of the cast is also here with us, so he could also share his experiences working on this film. Uh, and uh, hope you like it. So this is, this is Scotty Works Out. Uh, what do you think? Any thoughts? Okay. Uh, this, this, um, as I say, this was uh, a lot of fun to do, and, and and I think there's a few different things that that I could certainly talk about uh, with you guys. It, it really kind of depends on, I suppose, what you are interested in. And we could certainly talk about uh, what went into uh, producing this film. We could also talk a little bit about um, who this Scotty character is. And talk a little bit about music, and also just talking talk in general about the whole idea of uh, uh, trying to fit in, trying to you know trying to fit into a world that maybe you don't feel like you 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 belong in, and suddenly uh, being faced with uh, uh, actually having to uh, talk to that world and be a part of that world. Um, and I want to mention, so one of our actors is, is here. Uh, uh, I'm going to bring up David Cook. He played Adventurous Guy. He's the guy that was hanging all over the, the bar. You can stand up, Dave, if you want. <laughs> um, and David uh, was a, or is still a, a student here at, at Moraine Valley and uh, has been a member of the film club for a few years. Um, and it's one of the things that I really enjoy doing is, is getting other students or former students, current students involved in uh, uh, my, my production. And um, David was a, was a crucial member uh, to this and to, uh, and to other things too. So uh, it's good to, good to have him here. Um, I, d I mean, maybe I should just sort of start off. Does anybody have any any questions uh, that we could maybe sort of take this in a direction that's going to be of particular interest to uh, to any of you? Here and use the microphone so everyone can. I was just wondering where you got your cast. You mentioned Dave was a student here. Where'd you get the rest of them? So. Um, uh, David and also Zach, who who played, um, geez, what's his what's his character's name? Club guy. Club guy. I'm sorry, Club Guy. 
they, uh, they're both, they both were students uh, here at Moraine. And uh, a couple of them are also st uh, students of mine at DePaul. And I also, uh, uh, we went through a, a casting director uh, to get uh, a couple of them. Uh, the guy who plays Scotty, Sean Bear, and the guy uh, who plays Josh, Chris Brickhouse, they came as a recommendation from a casting director that we had, we had used. Um, and then a couple, couple of the cast members are also um, colleagues. Uh, they're people that um, I've taught with. And uh, they're interested in being a part of, part of the film. So uh, yeah, kind of a variety of sources. You know, with, with, with short films like this, and, and I think for um, people who are, you know, if you're students, you might not necessarily have you know, access to a casting director. Um, it sometimes is hard, and you think, oh, I'll get my friends to, you know, to be in, in, in a film, uh, and then sometimes you know, your friends might bail on you at the last minute, but this is, uh, we tried to take this kind of a step further and, and try to, uh, you know, make sure that anybody that was uh, involved with it was there because they really, really wanted uh, to be a part of something, something like this. So, uh, quest other questions, other questions? Wait for a microphone. Oh, there you go. Sorry. You will disappear if you don't have the microphone. There you go. Uh, I just had a question. Um, how long? About how long was it in production? Um, we actually shot um, this whole film in two days. We were actually supposed to, to shoot it in. It was it was going to be a three day shoot, and we were able to get it done in in two days. We had. Uh, uh, one of the, bi the big issues that we had is that th this was a, a gym that we shot it at that's in Chicago, uh, and it, you know it's right on this, you know, fairly fairly populated populated street. But there's two walls of windows, and we had to be really careful with that because we had to be sure that obviously it was clear that this was the same time of day most of the time. And um, because we were shooting certain things, and we only had, we only really had the, the gym from uh, like mid afternoon until you know one o'clock in the morning uh, for two days, and then the third day was going to be an overnight shoot, and so we decided, okay, we have to, we're going to try to do this in, in two days, but we had to really be aware of the fact that there was going to be sun coming out of it for half the shoot, and then there was going to be darkness coming out of the windows for the other half of the shoot. So we had to kind of play around with it. And, and you know, when you're, when you're constructing a film like this or you're producing a film like this, you really have to be aware of you know, what your surroundings are and, and what, what you're going to need in terms of lighting and so forth. And so uh, everything that we shot that had the windows behind us, we shot first. And then anything that was against the opposite wall, like when the every move counts guy is like by the, the, the green kind of background, that was all shot like later, that was shot at like, you know, 11 o'clock at night. So it just, I mean, it, it, so it wasn't really, it wasn't a difficult production in that sense, but it was, it was difficult in the sense that we really had, had to be aware of, of, of the lighting. And um, <clears throat> the other thing that's difficult is that when you're shooting in a, in a place like that, you know, and because it's a gym and there's potentially, uh, you know, danger uh, to, to, to the actors because, you know, anything could happen in a gym. Um, and people could get hurt potentially. So you know, we have to we had to pay particular attention to that in terms of like with waivers and you know insurance forms and, and stuff like that, so that you know, there wouldn't, wouldn't be any <laughs> any such issues. And we mostly uh, got uh, through the shoot uh, without any major <coughs> issues. <laughs> adventurous guy, <coughs> um, adventurous guy lived up to his, uh, lived up to his name. I'll just I'll just say that. <laughs> he almost got impaled, but you know, <laughs> on his own insistence of wanting to do another take that he he, uh, he, he wanted to do. So, um, other again, I'm just kind of keeping keeping Dan, it up. Could, I can talk about specific. Could you things. talk a little bit more about the production? So, you did a two day shoot. What does it yeah. take? And uh, so, screenplay. You, you mentioned the casting oh. director. So, from that point, you have a casting director. You have a screenplay. How do you get from that to the? to the two-day shoot? What are all the, well, maybe not all the steps, but the shortened version? Okay, sure, sure, yeah. We, we probably, let's see, we, I think uh, my initial talks with, the, oh, oh, and I, I should have mentioned too that the guy who was the director of photography, so this is the person that essentially was designing all the shots, like those interesting shots with all the heads kind of like, you know, uh, looking down at, at Scotty. Um, 
Jason Nade, he was also a student uh, here at Moraine, and he also has taught here at, at Moraine. Um, and so we've had an association for a few years. But we had had our initial talks about this film. This was in like about December uh, in 2012. And then um, I kind of like made some changes to the script for a couple of months. And then it was really between about March and, and, and May, we did a lot of what would be referred to as pre-production work which is where we spent a lot of time uh, trying to find a location. We had had another gym picked out and we were, gonna, we were going to shoot there, but that particular um, gym had fell through because they didn't want to close. And we really had to make sure, when you're, when you're making a film like this, you really have to make sure that you have everything constant. And you, you know, if, if uh, suddenly people sort of show up and they want to like, you know, sort of just work out, um, if you want to reshoot that scene, you can't do it because you might not have that person there. So you have to kind of keep everybody out of the uh, out of the set and just have your actors there. So that wasn't going to work. So we ended up finding this particular um, uh, gym, and uh, I, you know, I would say that with cast casting, we probably uh, started casting about maybe a month and a half before we actually shot. Um, and and then uh, and there were a couple of casting changes that occurred like right near the end. Uh, some of the the characters in the film, um, their names changed just kind of as a result of who got cast. Um, because originally, like Dave, Dave wasn't supposed to be um, adventurous guy. He was supposed to be what were you supposed to, sk uh, skinny guy? No, skinny. I forget what it was like, skinny guy or something like that. But I thought, well, like, Dave's not really like skinny guy. He, but he's a big adventurous guy, and so we decided, okay, we'll change his, you know his character's name. So look, there were a few changes like that that were made, and then, <clears throat> as I say, we we shot the film in two days, and then we spent probably about well we, a good solid two weeks um, uh, editing the film, um, and uh, you know which is kind of going through all of the, the footage that we had. And we, and we had a lot. I mean, there was a lot of different takes of various things that we did here. And so we spent a, a good couple of weeks on that. And then uh, started sending it out to film festivals after we did, like, the first cut. And, um, and then it made it to a film festival in, in Palm Springs, California. And uh, we were sort of off and running. And so then we actually made some changes after that, too, and kind of changed the color and things like that. But that's essentially, you know, by the time we hit, like, July, last year it was it was it was done so I mean it's a short film so it's not like a project that necessarily should take a long time but sometimes they do depending on what the project is and how involved uh, it, it is okay other questions Where else is it screened? so it, this um, it's screened in Palm Springs. It's uh, screened in Santa Barbara, uh, California, and Spokane, Washington, at um, Santa Fe, New Mexico. Uh, it's played at a few fests in Chicago. So it's kind of made the rounds. It, it just this summer, or the end of the summer, actually, it was a few weeks ago. We played at the Chicago, the Par Chicago Park District does these movies in the park, and so it, it played in one of the one of the parks uh, in in Chicago, so it's kind of played at various places throughout the city, and you know, in in various other cities, Geneva, Illinois, they have a film festival and played there, you know, got a got an award there. So we've kind of played at a few different a uh, few different uh, places throughout the Chicago area, in addition to across the across the country. Um, maybe you know, maybe one of the things we should talk a little bit about. We really we've talked that's about the. The production, maybe talk a little bit about the the content and in terms of what is kind of uh, this character of, of Scotty going through. I mean, uh, what did you think about Scotty as a character, and what did you think about him? C could you relate to this character in in any way? I mean, is there anything about his character that you'd say, oh yeah, you know, I could I could certainly you know connect with him? Anybody? Uh, I think I Wait, we can't hear you. Oh. Sorry, I left right. that side of the room. This really helps because we are recording for the podcast and video, so if you don't use the mic, you disappear into everything. There you go. I was going to say, uh, 
I definitely could relate because the once in a while I do go to the gym. I uh, I had my headphones on the whole time, just pretty much all the time, wherever I am, and I definitely think it would be a good idea to take them off and relate and talk to other people, not just focus on my music and what I'm doing. Yeah, and I think, I mean, that's really one of the messages of the film is just the, the idea that, as I said earlier, you know, we tend to be really, really plugged in. And, um, you know, we, we tend to not connect with the people around us because, you know, we got to like get on our phone, we got to check our statuses and, and you know, we've got we don't want to like have to converse with other people. We want to talk to our friends on Facebook or whatever it might be without even necessarily uh, uh, trying to make new people, new friends that are actual people like in your environment. Um, and I think that certainly in, in a gym environment in particular, you see that all the time because people uh, you know, that's what they use in order to motivate themselves and it's what they use in order to uh, kind of, you know, move with the, with the experience. Um, but it's also, I think that there's some intimidation. I think, when, you know, when you're in a gym and, you know, you see, especially for, for guys, in this case, Scotty, you know, when you see these like big muscle bound guys, it's like, you know, you feel like, oh man, how could I possibly, you know, compete with that? Um, and so I think that that's, that's sort of a, a more sort of universal idea that, that I was trying to explore. But then the other part of it is, is obviously this is a character um, who uh, wants to reach out, wants to find someone, and uh, really has a, has a difficult time with it because he remains so plugged in. You know, he, he'd like to talk to one of these people. He'd like to talk to one, you know, one of these guys that he's seeing. And he sort of created his whole, these, all these ideas about who these guys are and what they are, and yet they, he hasn't really met them. He hasn't really gotten to know um, who any of them are. He just has his ideas in his head. So part of the, the focus here is, is to also kind of emphasize that, you know, sometimes real human connection is, is better than what you might have in your head. Because in the case of, of Scotty, you know, Scotty was, he was really interested in this boxer guy. He's like, he wanted to meet boxer guy. He wanted, you know, he, that, that's what was his big connection. And then he kind of found out, you know, boxer guy, he was, you know, kind of a jerk. Um, and then this nice guy, Josh, sh shows up, who he hadn't even considered. And, uh, you know, Josh is someone that obviously I I is into something more than himself. And that's not something that you could always tell if you're plugged in. You know, and, and in the case of, of, of Scotty and Josh, their meeting by the end of this is uh, as a result of having to talk, you know, and using, you know, human uh, communication. So that was, that was one of the major, major points. Um, other? Yeah. Did you have a question? Ant, oh, there's a question up in All the right, front. I'm running. Here I come. <laughs> Okay, so what was the uh, inspiration behind Scotty Works Out, like the whole plot and the concept behind Scotty? Well, you know, like I said, I mean, it, it's really, it's kind of a combination of things. It's, uh, it's that whole experience of, you know, being in, in an environment like that, being in a gym. Um, I had, uh, uh, you know, a really a good friend uh, who we would go on, you know, various trips and we would, you know, spend a lot of time and we would talk about people in that same way. Um, you know, you'd, you'd kind of inv you'd invent, we'd invent names for people and kind of come up with, with, with ideas for who these people are, you know, again, without actually talking, talking to them. And then, you know, in thinking about that in relation to something like a gym or then, as I'm saying too, even something like, you know, being in a classroom, being in any environment, you know, you always kind of get these ideas about people even though you don't actually talk to them. So, so the idea was really to kind of explore that and, uh, you know, kind of based on, you know, my own experiences and kind of, and, and uh, other people's experiences sort of being in those environments and really trying to come up with a, uh, you know, a, a, a way of, of kind of moving beyond just, you know, being in my head too, for that matter. Others, yeah. Yes, here I come. Hang on. Oh, I keep forgetting yeah, about I your know. mic. No, I know. Um, when he was having a flashback, like the daydream uh, with the manager, dude, why did he play the manager and the girl kissed him? Why did he play the girl and he kissed the dude? 
Wait, okay, wait, why didn't he, why he did he? When the daydream, the manager, yeah, yeah, the yeah, girl, yeah. Like, why did he play the girl part instead of the manager part? Like, why didn't the girl come in and kiss him? Why did he come in and kiss the manager? Confuse me. Oh, I, yeah, okay, okay, I hear you. Okay, so the, so, so the, so, okay, so the question is, why did Scotty take on essentially what was the female role from real life and, Okay, and does anybody have any thoughts about that? Comical relief. Part of it was comical relief. Yeah, part of it was, it was you know, supposed to be kind of fun. But other, other thoughts about that? I mean, I think that, uh, you know, the, the basic idea here is that Scotty, you know, as, he, as he's talking about manager, he's saying, oh, you know, he's, he's super nice. He has great dimples. You know, so there, there's an attraction there, right? So his interest is more with the manager than it is <laughs> with the fitness star girl, right? If, 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 you, if you get what I'm saying, that he, you know, he's not attracted to fitness star girl. He's attracted to the, to the manager guy. So it kind of makes a little more sense for him to imagine he was in her position versus if, if he was in the manager's position and then she came in, then that would be suggesting that there was a connection between he and fitness star girl. But, you know, I think it's pretty clear, you know, in terms, uh, hopefully it's clear, that, you know, within, his, you know, his identity, he's obviously much more attracted to men, and this is what he's, this is what he's looking at and, uh, you know, where he kind of sees himself, you know, being most connected to. So, um, other... Uh, yeah, I had a question for Dave. What was it like um, doing the shoot? It was. Oh wait, you gotta get. We, yep, we gotta sorry, get the, We gotta get this. You could. You could come up if you want, Dave. Oh, yeah. well, <laughs> it was uh, where I needed to be because this is what I want to do with the rest of my life. I'm extremely passionate about film, but whenever I get a chance to be an actor in something like this, I am definitely in every time. But well, working with the cast, uh, it's perfect. Everyone was, you know, <laughs> everyone was great. You know, everyone was outgoing. Nobody was giving anyone a hard time. So I liked it. <laughs> it was very, it was very good. <laughs> well, and D Dave has made a lot of um, short films during his time at Moraine. Um, but this, this was... I mean, I, I don't know that you've done a lot outside of outside of. I mean, you, he, Dave has his own website. Okay, I'm going to plug Dave's website. Should I or should I not? What what is your website? It's uh, a YouTube page, uh, Nutty Batuski. <laughs> Nutty Batuski. Yeah, N U T T Y B U T T U S K I. <laughs> and uh, he does some pretty just, nutty stuff on on his site. It's not so much film. <laughs> it's more like challenges and goofy stuff, but. All that aside, um, it was very, very educational for me to be in this film because I've never been in anything this professional before. So to work with Dan is a privilege. So. Thanks, yeah. thanks, Dave. <laughs> thanks, Dave. And I, I should. Oh, go ahead, Hardy. Oh, Mike. <laughs> okay. Uh, so. Um, can you tell me what it's uh, different between uh, what's the different experience between being in front of the screen and being you know behind of the screen that you have been in the production area like how the shooting like how how everything develops uh, behind the screen like how how is the environment and how is the environment uh, in front of the screen like what's the difference between both environments? Being in front of the camera is a little bit <laughs> more intense because you know you have to perform just right but being behind the camera is has its own stresses and it's it's a lot more tedious you know to wait and but when you're on camera you kind of kind of goes a little quicker than you expected but it's a little hard for me to explain that well, maybe I think Dan can explain well I mean I think what, what you're saying is that because when you're behind the camera you're kind of involved with everything and so all the all the minute mm -hmm. details is to you know what are people wearing to what's the lighting going to look like to do we have the right shot how are these things going to going to going to show up on the screen um, whereas when you're an actor you know you kind of have to remember your lines and you have to know kind of what you're going to do and not that not to you know 
say that being an actor, you don't have to do much, but you know, once you're done with your shot, th there could be long periods of time where you're just kind of standing around waiting for the next thing, um, which would be, you know, to uh, uh, shoot your next scene. I mean, patience. Yeah, so you got to- A lot of actor, patience you, in you, the background work too. You got to have a lot, lot of patience because you're just kind of sitting around most, most of the time waiting for your time, waiting for that moment when your camera, the camera is going to actually be on you. If there's no other question, I have a question for Dan actually to go back about some of the content. Okay. Um, one of the things uh, Tish Hayes and I, who are the co-planners for the one book, uh, we liked about this film, many things we liked about this film besides the fact that Dan's great and we're supporting him, um, but is the, the play with the title, right? I mean, this is a type of coming out story, um, but it's different than other kinds of coming out stories. And I had a faculty member say to me when they saw that we were um, showing the film, so is this deal with, you know, um, him being gay and dealing with his homosexuality and the kind of things you would think of in a coming out story. And I'm like, no, I kind of like it because it really is just like he just is attracted to dudes. Yeah. And that's okay. It's not even a big issue, but it's still a coming out story of him understanding himself, him being comfortable with himself, right? Being more confident in himself. And I think I like it because then I think all, all of us deal with that. I mean, all of us deal with understanding ourselves. All of us deal with being comfortable. And so I thought it was a neat play with the title with the content, and you think it might go one direction, and it doesn't, right? It's really kind of a sweet kind of kind of approach, and so um, I think that's something that I hate to have this opportunity and not have that yeah. be said. You know, I think it's no. I, I mean, I think you're absolutely right. I mean, that was one of the one of the intentions uh, with this and this and with this particular title. Um, you know, the thing is, is that you know, as far as like you know, a coming out story, there's a lot of those. You know, and, and maybe not everyone has seen a lot of coming out stories, but there's a lot of them. But there's also a whole other side of, you know, uh, identity. It's, it's you've accepted who you are. Now, how do you, like, deal with the rest of the world, but also just how do you deal with other parts of yourself? You know, Scotty was very comfortable with who he was as a person and what his sexual identity was, but what he wasn't as comfortable with was just human communication, you know, and, and again, feeling more comfortable with, with who he is. So it wasn't really meant to be only one type of coming out. It was, you know, the coming out as a person and coming out and saying, oh, this is, this is, this is who I am, but it's, you know, more than just your, your sexual identity. And so. I think especially, this gets a little, little um, generalized, but especially at your t lifetime of 17 years old in your early 20s, I mean, all of us are kind of coming out into who we're going to sure. be, right? And so I think it's easy to connect um, with Scotty on those levels. Um, absolutely. So yeah, absolutely. Other questions besides just me talking to Dan? <laughs> Anybody? We could, yes. Uh, what was involved in actually getting the gym to let you come in for two days and take it over and shut it down for two days? Well... Uh, you know, one of the things <laughs> that worked in this particular case is that, so the guy who plays manager guy, Bruce, um, is an aspiring screenwriter. And I met him through another faculty member at DePaul. And uh, I knew that Bruce really would want to be a part of it in some way. So it was, it was easier for him as the manager. He really, he really, at that point, was the manager of that particular gym. Um, but, uh, you know, he had to then convince the owner uh, that this was a good idea. So, because he was, you know, helping me, but it was also helping him to an extent too. Um, and they, they didn't really have too much of an issue. They just didn't want it to disrupt, um, you know, the hours um, and when they're open. And the thing about, if you know anything about like gyms, is they tend to be really crowded, you know, early in the morning or like late in the afternoon. Well, it's a little bit different downtown in the loop because, you know, in the, in the loop, there's all this like, you know, traffic of people that are working during the week. But on the weekend, there's not as many people down there. So part of our, our, our play with all of that was to try to find a weekend that we could shoot because we knew that there would be more opportunities to shoot on a weekend than during, during the week. Um, we, wouldn't, we wouldn't have been able to have it completely closed down for our shoot if we would have shot it during the week. And, and that's why when we were gonna shoot on a Saturday, Sunday, and Monday, Monday we were gonna have to shoot from 9 p.m. until 5.30 in the morning, 
nobody really wanted to do that. So we, it was really kind of pushing us to kind of really get it done a little bit sooner. But otherwise, you know, they couldn't be better. And, and really, th their only concern was that we, you know, every day that we, you know, clean the place up and got it ready because we shot on a Satur Saturday and then into Saturday night, and then we had to essentially take everything back. We'd like take all the equipment, put it back in our truck, and have the whole gym had to be set up for them to, for people to come in to work out on Sunday morning. And then when they closed at like one o'clock in the afternoon, we had to bring everything back in and set everything up again. So, um, you know, that was fine, it was doable. You know, it was, and it's really a, ma a matter of the planning. You know, it's a matter of planning out uh, and, and knowing exactly how many hours you're going to need, when you're going to be there, and so forth, and we were able to do it. So, other, yeah. Um, as Scotty, I was trying to see the identity, which he pretty much covered, and uh, what was the subliminal message, or what was the whole purpose of making the video? Well, I don't know if there's a subliminal message. I think, I, I, would, I like to think that the message w it was was fairly clear that, you know, again, as we were talking about, you know, just about somebody needing to connect and needing to come out. You know, we spend a lot of time in our heads, right? You know, we're always thinking about stuff. And sometimes it's best to let that out. And so if there's really any message is to, if, if, you, if you let it out and you connect, uh, you, you're more likely to find what it is that, that, you, that you need as opposed to what you think that you want. Um, I think really that's more than anything else. And in his case, you know, as he says at the end, it was right in front of him. You know, even though he, he wasn't really looking closely enough uh, because he was in his head creating his own fantasies, uh, he didn't really know what was right in front of him. And so sometimes you have to get out of your head, go into the real world and, in order to really be able to uh, connect. Um, Oh, and, I want, and one other one other because I know we're we're running uh, uh, low on time, but one thing I want to mention is that we are we have actually shot a follow up uh, to this film. Uh, it's currently in post production. Uh, it's a film uh, called Scotty and Josh Get Enlightened, and it's essentially about these two characters. And now that they've kind of met each other, what they're learning about each other and. Uh, one of the things we find is that one of the characters, uh, that both characters are on opposite ends of uh, a continuum. If you want to call one side of it believer and one side a non-believer, they're at opposite ends. So what happens when, when, that, when you meet somebody that's sort of at, not at the same place that you are philosophically or spiritually, whatever. So uh, that's what we're working on right now. It's cur currently being edited, so we'll see. Hopefully we'll... Uh, We'll get that going soon. You can always go, go to our, uh, our the Scotty Works Out Facebook page, and then uh, and if you like it, you'll get updates on what's going on with that. And actually, there is a Scotty and Josh Get Enlightened uh, Facebook page, too. So if you want to find out what's going to happen <laughs> and where the, that's going to screen in time, you can always uh, look at that, too. So. Okay, how about a round of applause for Dan Thank you. and Dave? Thanks for coming. Thanks to the film club. Thank you all. Tomorrow we have a, a panel discussion here in the library at 11 about bullying and related topics. So thank you.